I'm going to do this sermon on the fly, and we're going to see how it goes. You're going to be gracious, because that's how you are. Uh, so we are start launching something today called Make a Difference Campaign. And this came to Rob a few weeks ago. Um, here in his notes, he's talking about how he was sitting in the Starbucks in Bradford and just was completely overwhelmed by um, the things that are going on in Bradford, uh, like just the people don't know Jesus, what's happening, and uh, the people need to know Jesus. Um, so he spent a lot of hours asking God, how do I reach these people? And the reality is, um, in order to reach people, we need to gain their trust. And in order to gain their trust, we actually need to do something that makes a difference in their lives. Um, it's hard work to gain people's trust. And it's hard, it is harder work to gain the trust of an entire culture. The church in Canada right now is declining. 50% of Canadians say they have no religious affiliation at all. So <clears throat> when we used to be a Christian culture, we used to be a Christian country, now most people have not even set foot in the church. So how can we make a difference? Because um, we have to make a difference. Promise Church was planted to be a church on mission. We never meant to just be here in our walls, us taking care of us. We always wanted to be a church that goes out into the community and makes a difference. Um, so what is required to do this? We're actually challenging you guys to do some hard things. We know that it's not easy to get outside your comfort zone. We know it's not easy to talk to people. But we've already started to make these steps. We've done it through our um, Adopt a Street program when we walked around and we prayed for the various streets. We did it with our meet and greet barbecues. We were able to affect so many people in our area and in our neighborhoods just to show them that God cares and that he wants to make a difference in their life. Um, our world does not recognize God's story any longer because we have been in retreat for too long. You know this is true because if you talk to someone about the Bible, they literally don't know the first thing about it. You also know it's true because no one invites a conversation about God. We don't have those anymore. We don't talk about uh, what's God doing in the culture. So uh, this is my tech savvy genius happening right here. Sorry, one sec. Um, whoops. Okay. Okay. Our culture not recognizing God's story any longer is a result of the system of the church. Christians have created this problem. In North America, the church has set itself up to retreat from the world. This is not God's will for us at Promise Church. We are not a hunker down, protect ourselves, push the big bad world out there. We want to get out into this world. The world does not know Jesus because the church has not shown an accurate view of Jesus. It has spent too long protecting itself from the scary world has spent too long in spiritual pride that we know better than they do, and has spent too long hiding behind the four walls of moral superiority and theological gluttony. It's funny, we are doing the transformed Bible study downstairs, and um, one of the things that Rick Warren has talked about in that is that if all we do is take in the word, take in the word, take in the word, and we never do it, we just become fat and out of shape and ineffective. We need to be taking in the word, and we need to be uh, then going out and sharing that word, word, word with other people. The world, the world needs to be shown. Jerry Maguire's Show Me the Money was a thing that dates, well, me too. He says it dates him, but it also dates me. Uh, but the point was, get the contract and celebrate the success. The world demands to be shown. And Jesus came to show and to be the salvation of the world. But before Mary, uh, Jerry Maguire, there was Annie. Annie was a musical about an orphan girl who changed uh, a rich businessman's life. The theme of the musical is love is better than money. But the villains in the musical have a song called Easy Street. Uh, what they want more than anything is the easy street to get money so they can live on easy street. In our culture, we are seeing the death of church after church because the churches are not offering what Jesus is offering. The villainous goal of the church is to fill the seats on Sunday morning. The idea is make it easy and attractive, make it as easy and attractive as possible for people to come to church. Uh, because if we have the best show or the biggest lights or the most whatever, then people will want to come to us because we have the, the latest, you know, hip thing. And then... Um, 
but the problem is it's failing all over North America because brighter lights and great music and whatever, as good as those things are, that is not Jesus. People need the, the hope and the message of Jesus. Um, so two problems we have is it makes Sunday gathering the entire point of Christianity. When we put all of our time and our attention and our money and everything into how well we can do a production on Sunday morning, that be, makes it all about the church. And it makes following Jesus too simple, too simple, cheap, and without value. You can just come. You can sit here Sunday morning. You can check your I went to church card, and you can go about your life without doing anything else. And that's not what we want. Um, there is a holy, divine goal of church, to know God and to make him known. Or as we put it, to show God with us, making everything right. This is not easy. There is no easy road to do this. There is no easy street. Um, as members of this church, we are in this together, but it takes hard work, and it will take sacrifice, and it will take effort. In Luke 9, 23, it says, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, this, this is to be his disciple, they must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. There is no easy street. There is no just make it to heaven and to get what we want. There is a divine promise that God is with us. He will not leave us orphans, but he will come, and he will come to us. There is the divine promise that God will empower us, that we'll make a difference. Um, it will not be easy, but it will happen. And uh, there is eternal life, that we should love one another. Promise Church is pushing hard against the wrong-headed church assumptions. <laughs> Uh, Promise Church is pushing hard against the wrong-headed church assumptions. Uh, in 2022, we have run four major campaigns, and we will run one more. We will repeat them until they inform our entire church. Lead Spiritually, which was the, the focus of our retreat, which is let's bring God into conversations where God would not normally be brought into them. And that can be as easy as, so how was your day? How was your week? Let me tell you about my week. This is what God did for me this week. Because people want to hear our stories, our adopt a street, like we said, our street meet and greet, and our promise grants. And today we are launching Make a Difference. We are going to act in unity, and we are going to make a difference this Christmas season. Uh, make a difference is defined as this. To make a difference in someone's life, do something uplifting that would not have happened without you doing it. That's it. That's what we want you to do. Um, and then if you combine make a difference with lead spiritually, it is defined in two parts. Do something uplifting that would not happen unless you, without you doing it. And introduce God into the conversation where God would not have been spoken about. So each of us needs, this is what we're going to do. Okay. Now we're getting into the nitty gritty of the make a difference campaign. Okay. This is what we want you to do. It's hard to do things on our own. So what we want you to do is partner with somebody else in the church. It could be your family if you want, or you can partner with another family, or you can partner with someone else. And what we want you to do is pick somebody. It can be your neighbor. It can be your coworker. It can be the lady at the Starbucks. I don't care who it is. But pick somebody in your life and figure out something you can do that will make a difference in their life. Okay? So I have already said to Corey and Pam that we are going to make a difference in our line dancing class on Thursday nights. I don't know what we're going to do yet, and we haven't talked about it, but what we're going to do is somehow on that Thursday night where there's a bunch of people who don't know Jesus, we're going to go there and we're going to do something. Corey's going to come up with something brilliant, and then my entire line dancing class is going to come to church the following week, so including Jessica's dad uh, who teaches me. Uh, so that's it. It's not, it doesn't have to be deep. It doesn't have to be whatever. It has to be the fact that we are going into a season that can be one of the loneliest seasons for some of the people in the world. And we want to make a difference. So what you do is you go to promisechurch.ca and you scroll down and there's a section that says uh, grant applications because we're going to put this under our promise grant um, program. And you fill it out and you have up to $200 to make a difference in other people's lives. Uh, whether it's I'm going to take in coffee and donuts for the office, whether it's I'm going to uh, babysit for a single mom and give her a night out at the movie, I don't care what it is. You go in there, you fill in your idea and who you're doing it with, 
keep your receipts, and then you give your receipts to me. You can either email them to me, which is the easiest way to get them to me. If you hand them to me, please write your name on them, and that it's Make a Difference campaign. Otherwise, you will be donating your money to Jesus. Um, and then you go, and you, then you do the thing. And if you can, you bring Jesus into the conversation. And that is what we want to do. We want to bless people all over the greater Bradford area for the next three weeks. I'm looking at Devin to nod as if that is correct. Yes. Okay, for the next few weeks, we want to do that. So, um, my good friend Colleen who is fantastic at crafts and stuff, has made a fabulous poster for us out there with some ideas for how you can make a difference in your community. So if you're like, oh, I don't know, go look at her poster out there afterwards, and you can look at all the ways that you can make a difference in the community. Um, what'd you say? Okay, good. Um, we do it because we love God. And God loves people, and we are learning to love people. It is the integrity of the Christian that makes a difference. If we don't live with integrity, we don't make a difference. So let's just shut the, shut the doors and not have church if we're not going to make a difference. Uh, this isn't supposed to be easy, but you can do it. And Jesus calls us to do it, and we need to do it. Because we need to make a difference in our community. We need to know. It's funny. I was reading uh, something on a message board that I'm part of with pastors. And the question came out, when all the churches shut down in the pandemic, did anybody notice? Or was it just the people in the building? Did the community at large notice when the churches shut down? Did people care that weren't in church? Obviously, we cared. But did people who weren't in church care that the churches couldn't meet? I think that's a real challenge for us. I think that people should notice, one of the things Rob has in here is that in the next few years, there are probably three churches that are closing down in the Bradford area because they don't have enough people that are going to them. Do we want to be that? Or do we want to be a church that's out there on mission doing the things that Jesus has called us to do? I am going to end the sermon here because I feel like you got the gist of what it's supposed to be about. Um, right now, uh, Mikha oh, Michaela's downstairs. Okay, uh, we are in the middle of a promise grant right now where we are helping the hands up, heads up, hands, hands, hand up. We're getting some gifts for some people. <laughs> And uh, Michaela is going to put uh, something in Slack afterwards if you guys want to be part of that. Or you can be part of your own thing. Um, and then if you could just share some of your ideas in Slack as you've been doing them so that people can be inspired by what you're doing. So when Corey comes up with our brilliant idea for our uh, line dancing class, maybe it'll be Pam, who knows, <laughs> then we'll put it in there. But let's do this. Let's encourage each other and let's encourage the people around us. Let's let people know that Jesus loves them. I am going to close. Lord, you do love people. And you've decided that the church is the way for people to hear about your love. You've decided that each and every person in this building is your instrument for loving other people. And so, God, as we go into this Christmas season, which can be so dark for some people, so depressing, I pray, Lord, that we would make a difference, that, uh, that you would give us incredible creative ideas for things that we can do, that you would um, help us to know who it should be that we are blessing, and that we would just celebrate over and over and over again the ways that we've been able to make an impact in our community. And so, God, I thank you that you are a God who will be with us. Holy Spirit, you live in us. You do not leave us alone. And you can help us do the hard things. And so we just give ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, to be used by you to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen.